Welcome to On the Line. I'm Christine Williams. Coming up for discussion on our Viewpoints panel, a single mom crisis. Later on, we'll be talking about life skills development. Stay tuned. And these are the issues we'll be presenting today to our Viewpoints guests for commentary. Described as a crisis in Toronto and perhaps in other urban centers, single motherhood and the absence of dads. Some ethical questions raised about the new CBS reality series called Kid Nation, described as a child version of Survivor. And expect a $2.40 increase in your next cable bill. In fact, maybe not your next one. The reason to pay for a new channel for the blind. Later on, we'll be talking about life skills development. But first, let's meet our Viewpoints guests. Robert Metz is president of the Freedom Party of Ontario. And Dr. Anthony Hutchinson is executive director with the Brampton Neighborhood Resource Centre. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for having us. Now, this was quite a write-up given here. Let's take a look at the headline, Where Are the Men? A very appropriate title. Now, Toronto is highlighted in this article, and I did mention in the introduction that perhaps other urban centers may be experiencing something very similar, but this is highlighted. We keep hearing in the news about the gang problem, the violence in Toronto. We also hear in news about the poverty situation in Toronto and other areas, urban centers especially. This article highlights the plight of moms in Toronto. On one hand, it talks about how difficult it is, talking about some moms holding two, three jobs to hold down the fort, but there's a difficult price to pay for that. Children, in these cases, sometimes, sometimes too often, go astray. Dads are absent. The article points out in many cases, you've got kids raising kids. In my opinion, it's something that we need as a society to pay attention to and do something about. I know that it becomes a political issue. Many people say, well, raise the poverty. Um, well, when it comes to dealing with poverty, raise the, um, the wage, the minimum wage, or perhaps raise welfare. But we've got a social problem on our hands that we really need to discuss. You're coming more from the political. You're coming more from the social. It's going to be interesting to hear your points of view. And I'm going to start with you on this one, Dr. Hutchinson, just to hear your overall analysis of this problem. You know, I got to say, Christine, that we, we are in a crisis. And, you know, um, having worked in the Sparaway community, which um, this article touches on with Pastor Bruce Smith, working with the, with the families in Sparaway, mm -hmm. working in Malvern, working uh, in, in, at a lot of other um, high, what we call maybe high need areas throughout the GTA, um, I, you know, I just flew in from Vancouver. Um, and and I can tell you that they have the same problems there. Major urban centers, and, and so, well. And, and you know, and, and I flew through Winnipeg. They have the same problems hmm. there. So yes, it's being you know, it's prominent um, because of maybe some of the the, the higher profile gun violence um, uh, incidents that have happened in the GTA. But we are in a crisis. And when you are in these communities, whether you be in in Malvern, in in Jane Finch, in in you know Jane Trithui, in Sparaway, in Rexdale, you see a pervasive problem, and that is fatherlessness. You know, where where are the dads? The dads are absent. In many cases, you may have a family that has three or four or five kids and the father is actually in jail or has, has, himself has been murdered. And, and this is becoming a, a very, very serious problem in our society. It's a crisis. It, it is a crisis. And, and, and what's happening is we have an absence of role models, an absence of, of leadership, um, a, a, a vacuum of, of mentorship. It, it's, it, and, and you do have children. And, and one of the most stigmatizing things is that the single moms who are working two and three jobs to try and make ends meet, they still represent what we call the working poor. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we have, we have a, an abundant number of latchkey kids who are uh, out there, you know, looking out for each other and then trying to find a sense of identity. They, and, and finding that sense of identity, they form groups. Sometimes we erroneously call those groups gangs, but mm -hmm. usually what, we, what are mostly noted as gangs really aren't gangs. They're just a group of young people who find a sense of identity together. They might want to call themselves the Bloods of the Crips, but they're really not the Bloods of the Crips. They, they couldn't even be able to survive a day with Bloods and Crips if they went down to the States. Yes. You know, but, yes. but they are groups of kids who are trying to find a sense of... Belongingness. Uh, belongingness, Very basic. exactly, and identity, exactly. Now, Robert, the political angle, as I see it, and you may add something completely differently mm -hmm. to this, is we see it all the time in the news and from political activists, poverty um, activists, which is good. They have their place in society. We need to do something about our poor. We need to help them. I believe that. I sincerely do. Mm -hmm. But the question is always how. Raising that, awareness that is, is a very productive. Groups like your own, the Brampton Neighborhood Resource Center, extremely productive in society. But there are those that say, 
raise welfare, raise minimum wage. I mean, there's a time and season for these things too, but I'm concerned about the mentality we have out there that to me needs addressing. We need to work within people's minds so that the cycle of poverty could be broken. You're doing that. But from a political perspective, do you have something to add to this or something to bring to the table here? It's very interesting. I, I first read this article last night when it was forwarded to me and I thought about it overnight and I said, my goodness, if you're looking for an answer to mm -hmm. solve this complex, deep ingrained problem Everybody right now, is. it's not going to happen overnight. Of course. I think, uh, and from a political point of view, Politicians aren't on the front lines. It, it, you know, it's people like Tony who are on the front lines. Certainly, okay? certainly. We need to be um, reminded of that. So I just saw a smorgasbord of, of issues here Definitely. Uh, when, when, when I looked at the big picture. First of all, I don't believe that poverty per se causes crime. It's not true and no, it's not a racial no. issue at all. And it's insulting to the poor. I, I know I, a lot of poor people, I, growing up, still do. That's true. And, the true, ones that I know are not criminals, during, so what are you saying? During the Depression, crime rates were not as high as people thought. If you're aware of, uh, uh, there's an economist in the States named Thomas Sewell, um, who has spoken many times. He's a black economist. He, has br he grew up in Harlem, mm -hmm. back at a time when he said it was safe enough to sleep out on the, bal on the uh, fire escape at night, mm -hmm. not be worried about having anybody rob you or steal anything away mm -hmm. from your property. It wasn't part of the culture. Um, politically, I can see other issues. Uh, minimum wage laws going up are not a good thing for kids because it's going to, you know, push them further away from the workforce because they need that first, first step up. Mm -hmm. We see certain child protection laws in which, uh, which really protect uh, unions from cheap labor, which we might get into in, in another mm -hmm. issue later on. Um, there's this moral relativism that's being just accepted by everyone as though there is no standard by yes. which to judge people. I see, we, we see uh, a push, for example, pe some people want to get rid of laws against spanking, just proper per parenting and spanking mm -hmm. of that sort where there's some discipline for uh, kids. There's also a, a predominant belief politically in using force and coercion to achieve social objectives. Mm -hmm. So why should we be surprised when kids use the same methods to get get their objectives. So, yes. and then there's family law where you have, I can see why a lot of fathers might run away, terrified at the kind of things that courts are putting on people in terms of, I've seen some blatantly unjust uh, support kind of payments and things like mm -hmm. that, where perhaps the father cannot even afford to pay, he's still being forced to uh, provide beyond his means because of whatever conditions might have happened prior to a split up or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can see all these factors, each one is a show in itself. But you see, uh, Andrea Reid, who is mm -hmm. a 36-year-old single mother, is mm -hmm. quoted in this particular article, and she just gives one example of how a type of a mentality could perpetuate yes. some kind of a behavior. Here's what she says, quote, now I'm quoting directly here, Andrea Reid, she says, and she's referring to, well, the black population, the men, okay? Now, this is not, this article talks more about the black population, signifying that, according to census reports, that half of um, single, single families, single parent run families are in the black community, one fifth the other communities. But here's what she says, where black women are concerned, and I'm quoting here, I feel they, referring to black men, don't think that we are probably deserving of marriage. It's okay to be with us, to have kids with us, but not really to commit. You're seeing a kind of a mentality here, a, a treatment of women here that goes both ways. Why are the men treating the women this way, number one, and why are the women putting up with that? You know, I think it's unfair to um, just say that it's 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 prev so prevalent in, in the black community yes, Be yes. because because actually if what happens is if you look at the the, the w let's say the white community well maybe there's more education in terms of of safer sex so you might not have as many um, children being born because of, of the safe sex whereas the education level in in in, in marginalized communities mm -hmm. tends to be not as prevalent and, yes. and so and so there's there's wider factors and you need to look at what the risk factors are that are facing that are, the kids are facing these communities. You know, when it's not that poor people are going to be more um, able to are predisposed to committing crime. It's not that um, more racialized people are going to be more predisposed to committing crime, but but there's what we call multiple jeopardies or, or there's multiple risk factors that if you do come from a marginalized community or you do come from a, a, a single parent family or you do come from a poorer community, that your chances of um, being engaged negatively in society are going to be greater. We need now, to educate these communities, though, right. no matter what that community is, we need to educate these uh, communities. Yeah, and, and these and a lot of a lot of racialized kids are pushed out of our school system. 
a lot of racialized kids. We talk about racial profiling with the, with with police. I see more racial profiling going on in our school system. Hmm. Teachers pushing, and, and and the Ontario Human Rights Commission has even identified that the the two most uh, the two populations of kids who are treated the most disproportionately are racialized kids and kids with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And 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 so when we have the but it you know it was a little bit of a, a flash and then and then it was passed just completely glossed over. So you know we're fast to point the finger at police when we need to look at things like our, our own school system and say how are we treating kids who come from vulnerable populations and vulnerable communities. Now we must go for a break and I'm talking maybe a minute at most. We're already over, but I've got to ask you this from a political point of view, mm -hmm. Robert. Do you believe that, politically speaking, now you're clear on the raising of the minimum wage, that you're not for that, but do no. you believe that more money, public funds, needs to be perhaps put into these community projects, particularly for the young? Now, I'm not talking just taking money and blindly putting it in. Perhaps we need to take a hard look of how our money is being, where it's being distributed in society first. When you say public funds, you mean government funds. I'm talking funds. government funds, but right. the public's paying for it. Generally, though, it's, it's tax money here. government funds cannot be controlled in the way that you are suggesting. That's just simply not possible. It has to be an independent agency of some sort that has control over its funding and its money and where it goes. That's why mm -hmm. I always advocate, mm -hmm. preferably, a private approach, a voluntary approach. Because public funds, again, that's the government going to another group in society and taking their money without their consent. How is that different from what we're accusing some of these kids of doing in that sense? Or what kind of lesson is being taught there? I think if you want to see children brought up with a certain standard, mm -hmm. you know, like thou shalt not steal, a good place to start, you know. Yes, yes. Let's have our governments <laughs> operate on that same principle. It would be a, a novel new approach for most governments. But we're only <laughs> scratching the surface right. here, believe it or not. There's no way we points. can get into this deeply. Definitely not. We're going to go for a break here. Um, ethical questions raised on a new C CBS reality series involving children. We'll talk about it after this. Stay tuned. Hello again and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. The second issue we're talking about, CBS puts kids in reality TV's tender care. Now that is referring to a new program in question called Kid Nation. It's a reality series that so-called, according to the article, dumped 40 American children at a New Mexico ranch for six weeks. Now, producers are saying it's no different than a camp. However, here's what critics are saying. Well, you can say it's no better than a camp if, well, the reality is 22-page documents had to be signed, single-spaced. Imagine that. So that's a lot of work you're looking at here. Legally exhaustive contract to take your child to an unspecified, remote, and, quote, inherently dangerous locations. Basically, washing the producer's hands of any danger that your child could be in. And according to what this article is saying here, kids could be in danger of not only picking up all kinds of germs, okay, and that sounds trivial, but even other kinds of dangers because they're just in some faraway location any accident, anything can happen. Because what you're looking at is these bunch of kids in a situation like Survivor. Problem here, would you say? Ridiculous. Uh, like, uh, you know, I just got to say, the minute you put reality money, in, in money. front of a sh the word show, you know, it's just, do, do we need another reality show? You know, um, you know we've, we, we're, we've become a bachelor, bachelorette, survivor, uh, you know, kind of a culture. Competition and, and, and is and it's, fierce yeah. with these reality shows. And you got to ask, like, who's really, and I wonder who the advertisers are going to be on this show. Right, because it's a kids show. So what are they going to be like having Toys R Us or whoever? They're you know very who, interesting you, point. You know, and and so you know, kids well, are kid, staying kids up later. Are, on it. are they aiming it at kids too? Well, well they are aiming it at kids, oh, and, okay. kids and kids, kids are, and kids and adults. And I, 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 this will have an appeal, I must say, from yeah. the from the economic point of view to everybody, because parents want to see. Because if they have kids, mm -hmm. they're curious, they could relate, yeah. and kids will also relate. Yeah. And that we actually discussed this on our last show of on the line, how mm -hmm. how far advertisers are willing to go to get the marketing, well, to market to kids. Kids, because right now much music is in a contract with MasterCard in order to get kids basically hooked on the plastic mm -hmm. from a very young age. Simply because once upon a time it was believed that kids younger than 18 didn't really play an important marketing role, but now apparently they have some well, anybody who buying has power a, that people didn't realize before. Anybody who has a child knows, well, you know, mommy, parents, buy, mommy course, buy this, daddy parents, buy that, sure. exactly. Yes, of you themselves know? they have no buying power, but through That's the parents right. they have it all. Yeah. You know, it's it's it, what we call reality shows too. It's not reality, it's not reality. please. You know, and yes. and it just shows the changing mores. You know, I I do a lot of research into entertainment, and it's funny that just recently, uh, 
you might not notice, there's an episode of Star Trek, the old Star Trek with Captain Kirk, if you recall, and there's an episode called Miri, which was actually banned in the United Kingdom. They, wouldn't, or they refused to play it on BBC until 1991 or two because it, it, it depicted children abandoned by their parents who all died because of some nuclear something or other, right? And it was, it was almost like a Lord of the Flies version of, uh, of Star Trek, and yet that was considered so sensitive that you couldn't put something like that on the air. Now you're tossing kids out into... which uh, and. I didn't see an age, but the only age I saw referred to here was 12 years yes, old. Yes. So I'm assuming that's an average age, young. okay, mm -hmm. but not y too much younger than that. But it's almost like child abandonment, uh, <laughs> dumping them off and letting the cameras fall. Oh, don't them forget the army what, of 12 psychologists yeah. that are going to be on hand because well, that makes it all okay. Yeah. Th they probably invented the thing because <laughs> <laughs> of the way a lot of them think about child uh, psychology. Yeah. You know? and, and it's not going to be like these kids are going to be abandoned. You're going to have, if anybody who's involved in television production knows that you have tons of people on oh, a set. Oh, sure, and behind you know, and you're, they're going to have first aid course. and they're going to have. So it's, first of all, it's. it's first it's, aid it's, after the fact. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but, but, but it's going to be a misrepresentation. It's not really even reality. But what? But it's what they're selling and the image that they're going to portray. And they're going to edit all of the adults out and they're just going to show the kids and they're going to show this illusion of reality. Right. And, and, and well. then you're going to have kids <laughs> probably who are going to watch it and, you know, and, and, and themselves are going to look up to these kids and go, oh, well, we can aspire to that. But really, it's, the, it's a complete fabrication. But you've got to say, why are they doing this show? They're, they're doing it because obviously it's, it's filling a niche. It's filling a void in the marketing realm because shows are only put on for marketing Something reasons. Something was mentioned in this article that really got my red lights up and I wondered what was meant by it in terms of supervision vision for the kids. Here's what it says. And wash their hands, referring to the producers, of any responsibility for the kids' life or safety, in brackets it says, including any failure to conduct conduct thorough background checks or to keep kids free from HIV or other sexually transmitted diseases. Does that mean the kids are going to be left alone to do whatever they please? I mean, I... I didn't quite get that statement. Well, the, the article it was an uh, there was an implication there. Yeah, and uh, it just sounds like they're abandoning them and letting cameras follow them around, and maybe just stopping them before they do something perhaps dangerous or harmful to themselves, hopefully. But, you know, this comparison is what's the big deal, it asks here. Kids act on TV shows all the time, don't they? But a 22-page document that you have to sign, single-spaced. Yeah, well, I wouldn't call this acting in the theatrical sense of the word, you know. Uh, an actor goes to training, they, know, they, they have lessons. This is not what this is about, I don't think. They, I think this is child well, abuse, well, I'm sorry uh, to say. Well, well I, I think it's child exploitation. I think it's yeah, abusive, frankly. Yeah, I, I mean, you could, I you mean could psychologically, argue this, yeah. you don't know how these kids yeah. are going to be mm -hmm. impacted either. Yeah, I, I mean, the article focuses on the physical dangers as well, but psychological, but it's I, evident. And then these kids are going to become celebrities, yes. right? And and you know, and we look at all of the wonderful test cases. What's happened to most child actors, right? And I mean, go down the, down the list. I won't bother, but we we all know them, you know. And just look at different strokes for. And these an kids, more of an example of that because yeah. it's it's pretty much a one time thing, unless maybe yeah. one or two of them yeah. might make it higher. I mean, this is horrendous. Yeah. And again, so I I think that this is something where we need to look at who's behind the show. We have, you have to look at the producers, the advertisers, and you basically we just need to not watch it. In terms of accountability when it comes to the advertisers, when it comes to the bottom line and what we're basically willing to sacrifice for the, the almighty dollar, mm -hmm. do you think the ship has sailed? Do you think really? I mean, I still hear people saying, look, we need to fight this. We need to do something about it. But have, is, the, is the horse already out of the barn, so to speak? In many ways, but I think a lot of times it, what makes things like this popular is the newness of it. And once it wears off yeah. and it's old hat and nobody's watching it anymore. Yeah. And you couldn't what spooks me is that we tend to inch ourselves over and over more and more to that slippery slope. So we allow one thing in, we inch over to another, mm -hmm. we keep going. Fueled, of course, by the internet where nothing is censored. Yeah. Um, that may be, but I think, I, I personally think a lack of uh, control and censorship in that sense, certainly for adults, is a good thing. Children, I think, are subject to a parental guidance of some sort. And so the idea of censorship is a non-issue with me with children. I don't call it censorship uh, either when I censor myself, that's making a choice, or when I tell my kids they can't watch that. It's not like I've run to the government to tell them that they can't watch that. That's a whole different situation. You can turn that TV off. Um, the adult I, censorship you know, issue is a whole different That's a whole game. different ball game. And uh, you know, even on my TV, like I was saying, I, was, uh, I, I babysit my grandson who's four or five years old, and I give him the control. But all the favorite channels are just set to the kid channel like the, 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 the ones for his age, even from two to five years yes. old, you know, so he doesn't I, I, go what an by adult the regular does, What an adult soaks his or her mind in, what adults soak their minds in, yeah. affects kids. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you have to understand, too, who's airing this? CBS. It's not Kids TV. It's not YTV. It's not CBC Kids. It's not those kids stations. It's going to be aired right. on it's the main... Kind of, uh, and, and it's going to be aired was, in, a pri in prime time. <laughs> right. and, 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 and the reason is because what the studies have shown is that at 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, we're not putting our kids to bed anymore. They're actually awake, mm -hmm. which opens up a whole other can of worms. Into like, are we? Are, how are we in terms of parenting? In terms of, I remember huge, I huge at eight issue. How are we in terms of parenting? That is the big question. <laughs> We're going to go for a break now. When we come back, expect two dollars and forty cents more on your cable bill. New channel for the blind. We'll talk about it after this. Stay tuned. Hello again and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. The third issue we're talking about, the CRTC has approved a channel for the blind. The headline, a mere $2.40 for telling it like it is. CRTC rules that cable TV must have channel for the blind. Written by Rob McKenzie. It's a commentary in the National Post. $2.40, you may wonder, well, what's the big deal? You're helping out the blind. Rob McKenzie brings up some interesting points here. He says, when you look at it from a marketing perspective, how many people are really benefiting? And when you look at it long term, how many people are really going to watch this channel? Because you still have blind people listening to regular channels because they can hear. This one is going to focus primarily on narratives. That, that's going to be the focus of it. So it remains to be seen if this is really going to benefit the blind over the long term. Another justification for it was, when you look at the number of people, well, getting older by stats in our population and the incidence of macular degeneration, people are suffering more in terms of blindness. I have, friend, I have friends with that and it, Exactly, yeah. and as the population gets older, it, it sounds grim, but we're gonna see more blindness. So that, that's, that's a harsh reality. But as Rob McKenzie points out, yes, it's only $2.40, but if you're looking at the working poor, and you're looking at certain elements of the middle class. I mean, you've got lower middle class, middle, middle, upper middle, if you really want to start getting technical about it. But people are struggling to make ends meet. And you say, well, what's $2.40? Coffee for a week or maybe a day, depending on the kind of coffee you buy. If you go to McDonald's, well, that's a different story. But that's it adds up. <laughs> that's not <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more. I'm saying nothing here. I like it. Now, anyway, nothing more to be said. But the bottom line is the coffee he's saying adds up. People keep hearing, well, it's only a cup of coffee a day if you pay this. Well, it's only a cup of coffee a day if you pay that, but it adds up over time. So those are basically the elements of the article, and it comes down to who do you support in this? Who's going first? I'll you, go, I'll okay, go you first. go first. You know, when I first saw the, the subject matter, I said, what is this, a joke? Because blind people watching TV, it sounds like it should be something more to do with radio than with television. Mm, but good of point. Course, radio, radio. That's because, a good point. And I've even noticed in my own cable package that television have, of late has become more like radio than the TV I used to know. Uh, when I used to subscribe to cable, I wanted to get the movie channels and like entertainment with, with mm -hmm. plots and, and outcomes and conflicts that resolved. But if you turn, if you click around now, it's all information. You've got the weather channel, news channel, news channels galore, all kinds of them, ticker tapes going by. But you're, like you, that, you're, you know? you're hitting a sensitive point with me no, there, specifically no. about the movies, because that's a downside I see. It hasn't become more like radio. If you look at these older movies, even the Alfred Hitchcock ones, the dialogue in those movies were so rich. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. it's just all based mostly on visuals. Uh, ah, but, uh, no, but that's the movies, not the information. Those actual movies saying. are on some stations now, like you've got the stations that cater to movies of that era. And also Turner on the regular Plus stations station. that also feature the yeah. movies. Well, well when, you go, when you go back, you think of the days of the Green Hornet or, or Dragnet or, yeah, or they used to have these they, they used to have the theater of the mind and you oh, have no all kidding. You, you good have, way of putting it yeah. theater of the mind yeah, and you have all of these radio shows that were on the radio and and they, they were great yeah too. Or, they or, were. War yeah. of the Worlds yeah. one of the most famous things that created mass hysteria you know was a radio program mm -hmm. that that was visually engaging right in the, mm -hmm. in the in the eye of people's minds and but you know I, I think that whenever we create a modality of technology um, wh anything, whether it be medicine, whether it be television, radio, whatever it is, then the question of accessibility and who has access becomes the next question to be asked. And and so we have television, and we have to say, okay, now we have television, now we have the movies or whatever, but we have to sit there and say, okay, now we have it. Where are the pathways of accessibility? And so when you're looking at um, any marginalized group, and, and those with disabilities, we can, might say that they're one group, we have to say, what is the pathway to the accessibility of that 
technology. And I agree that's mm. a legitimate question, but here's the issue. When you get the CRTC involved, you got both sides of the coin. Number one, they have to approve it, so you have to ask for permission. Maybe somebody was willing to do this years ago, but wasn't allowed to until they were given the permission to, it, to do it. And then once they give you the permission, it's no longer a voluntary thing. All of a sudden, everybody yes. has to so hop in the boat. So here's the next question. Was <laughs> it better, perhaps, on two fronts, to maybe tackle it as a radio issue? Or? Or have it as a specialty channel? Well, even I, I'm just I'm just putting that out as a know, possibility or because it would be more it, expensive as a specialty. It wouldn't be too far. I have a third. I have a third option. Yes. Why not ask the cable subscribers voluntarily if they'd like to pay the extra fee to help fund that? I don't see it as being a single channel thing either. I, c I can see this being more of a service, just like you have with uh, what do they call that lettering on the bottom? TTY. T yeah. Yes. For, for deaf people, you're talking you about know, TV can do that, yes. right? It right, can yeah. do that on a yes. number of channels, yes, it not can. just yeah. on a, a specialty mm -hmm. channel. So I was thinking more that would be what they're talking about, but again. Again, Although it's a, blind, specialty, do do? Yeah. a specialty channel. So I, I'm, I'm thinking this is a way of marginalizing them even further by, by well, here's your niche. You guys got to go over here, right? But I You're think not it's in the same wider. room with the rest yeah. of us, so to speak. I think it's, it, it is why, because no. you, you raised a very, very important point, Christine, in that as an, age, as an aging society, we're going to see more and more mm -hmm. visual impairment occur. That's what made it difficult to argue. Yeah. I, this one is really um, a, a tough one, I find. I, I agree with what you said, Robert, about um, radio is, a very, is, is perhaps more appropriate. Th that's an excellent angle. But from what we were saying here, too, about macular degeneration, it's a reality. It is a reality, and I think, but I think overall we need to, you need to do look at a, a cost-benefit. I think it's You do have to do yeah. a cost-benefit yeah. analysis, and I don't yeah. know if that was considered, beca no. because then again, when you start talking cost-benefit, you get labeled as, oh, how insensitive could you be? Because when it comes to issues of the disabled, I'm, I'm, I'm very much mm -hmm. a proponent for the disabled. Well, but as the article points out, long-term, we don't know yeah. even if this is going to help, because who says the blind are going to want to watch this? I'm not this. a big proponent of TV, period. Well, <laughs> so my, my question well, is... Well, that's a, another issue entirely. <laughs> <laughs> but again, here you have, you know, uh, unless the government. Unless it's your show. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> you know, the government through the CRTC forcing this one narrow option to everyone, okay? So I, I just think it should be choice. I think that people who are handicapped, when helped by government, should be targeted for their help so that they could pay for a, a specialty channel mm -hmm. rather than make everybody else pay for it who will never use it or never Although turn when you're on. looking at issues involving the disabled as well, it, it's, it's often, depending on what that disability is, to make the money to pay for it. That's another consideration as well. These people often find themselves marginalized in society because they can't get jobs as easily. And depending again on what that disability is, sometimes it's almost impossible mm -hmm. to get a job. So nope. they tend to be poorer, so to make them pay for it, you see, that's another issue as well. And not only that, that the middle class, so to speak, and all the people we talked about are also sort of getting government assistance. That just absorbs more uh, resources that could go to people like well, that. But again, you know, yeah, it's I, an it's issue. When they say it's a small price to ensure that all Canadians have access to TV by forcing it, I call it a small immorality, because what you're saying is it's, it's okay to take something from that person without their consent and give it to another person because you think that your cause is but you good. See, but you see, Everybody I, believes you see, that. When you look at the cause to even for universal Medicare, you could say that you're taking it without people's consent. I mean, this debate goes on and on. And it's true, and, and, and it has a, a negative problem, effect. I don't have a problem with everybody helping out the, the poor. I, I don't have a problem with that. That's a different but, thing than the government. And it's a different thing. I, I know, well, you're saying it's a different thing than the government, it's but our government, we live in a, in a democracy where mm -hmm. we, that's how our system of government has been, where we help out the poor. Yeah, there but has but been but universal. But unfortunately, the CRTC, as many of us know, it, is, it doesn't reflect a democracy. They, 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 they <laughs> They, they do what they want, when they want, under their own conditions, and, and we know from the way a lot of things get approved we that, that they, <laughs> they have their biases. And we're out of time yeah, for viewpoints. That. I should stop now. <laughs> Thank you both so much for joining Thank you. me. We're going to go for a break, now. when we come back, we'll be talking about life skills development. Stay tuned.